Hey Eastview, I'm Ian. And I'm Olivia. And congrats on almost surviving your third week of school. For our first story today, we'll enlighten you on a familiar faculty member you may have seen around school. And following that trend, we bring you one boy who overcame a language barrier just to follow his passion. Finally, we take a look at the greater impact of an Asian predominant film. Stay, Stay tuned for The Flash. With Bravo rehearsals starting up in the next month, one face that always comes to mind is technical director J.J. Miller. Jill has more on that story. Hi, my name is J.J. Miller. I am the technical director and theater manager here at Eastview. A couple years ago, Eastview's theater department was searching for someone to take the role of technical director. Thankfully, one man came along to take charge. If I'm being honest, Eastview found me. I got word that Eastview might need some help just even building sets. I hardly ever pick up a tool here other than to show how to use it or to teach or to make sure that they're using it safely. It's all them. Prior to Eastview, JJ taught students in a different setting. I spent about 10 years in youth ministry at a church in Lakeville. My whole life, since I was about eight years old, the only thing I had ever wanted to do was be a pastor and it was fantastic. But like all good things, they must come to an end. And JJ knew that it was time to, to change it up. And what I found is that students are students no matter where you are. And the way you, you care about them doesn't change, whether you're in church or whether you're in the school setting. And being able to, to transfer that over with the core of my faith has made this just natural and seamless. And I love it. If JJ would have never taken this opportunity, then he wouldn't have found his second home. Never thought that it would turn into like working here. And it's a huge blessing that it did. Signing off for The Flash, this is Jake. Wow, ECU really does have a lot of talented people. For our next story, we'll take a look into one student's passion for photography. Gabby has a story. My name is Nick Jaramillo, and I am a senior at ECU High School. So I was born in Colombia in a little city, Manizales it's called. A year ago I moved here to Minnesota. I taught myself photography on YouTube basically. And one problem was that there was not a lot of videos in Spanish. They're pointing here and then they take a picture. I'm like, okay, let me try that. From watching camera reviews, I just started learning. I met this guy that writes blogs for The Volk magazine. It's a fashion magazine here in Minnesota. And then the magazine has featured me a few times. They haven't paid me in money, but they paid me in product. For example, this jacket, like Zara, uh, reach out to me and they're like, we'll give you the jacket if you take pictures of it. I'm like, okay. I mostly take portraits. I like to capture people and more than people, what people feel. I like to have a story behind my photos. If you want to do something, just do it. Like I didn't know English. I didn't have any classes or anything, but I taught myself. So if I did it, why can anybody do it? Wow, what a journey. I wish I had an eye for the camera. Now, for many years, Hollywood's been portraying romantic comedies in a certain way. But Kyle tells me that one film has challenged those ways. Kyle has the story. Crazy Rich Asians. The film has made major achievements with an all-Asian cast, which hasn't been seen since the Joy Luck Club premiered nearly 25 years ago. The impact that media representation has on its viewers, especially minorities, is profound. With major trends in Hollywood now on the rise for this representation, Hollywood has finally begun to acknowledge the diverse demographic. And the Asian American community here at Eastview had a lot to say about that. I feel very proud to see this movie um, become a big hit. Um, it's empowering to see an Asian on the screen. It was really great seeing like the all Asian cast on there and seeing Asians in like many different kind of roles versus like one specific like friend role or like the smart person role. They got to be every single part. Here they actually had like actual Asian foods and like Asian music and Asian culture being in implemented. And when you see other movies and there's like a white actor saving China, like Great Wall of China, it kind of sucks because I want to be my own hero. 
or she can just be replaced by a white person. Like they act the same anyway. They're like the same person anyway. And like sure, like Asians tend to like try to act more like white people a lot, but like we're not white people. Although opinions varies, the impact of the movie is still felt within the Asian community. Opinions are unanimous in one area. 25 years is a long wait. Signing off for The Flash with videographer Kyle Huang, this is Ekra. You know, Ian, after a long show, I'm really feeling a little thirsty. Yeah, I could really go for a coffee right now. But all these trendy places these days seem a little expensive. Yeah, I wish we had someone who could tell us where we could get the best bang for our buck. Stay, Stay tuned for the credits. Location, I'm gonna give a five because it's kind of out of my way, but not too far out of my way. Like we're not in Minneapolis or anything. It's pretty cute in here. I could take a cute Instagram. I'm gonna give it an eight. Like it's really cute in here. I give this a five out of 10 because it's coffee, which I love. But I mean, it could be better. That was my review of The Buzz in Burnsville. Make sure to stay tuned for the next episode of Snacking with Sid.